This is the most powerful compact camera that Canon has ever made, yet I couldn't recommend buying this to anyone in good faith. Why is that? Well, this is a Canon M6 Mark II. It's an absolute beast. It's a tiny package, but it packs a 32 megapixel crop sensor. It's super responsive, has very fast AF, shoots up to 14 frames per second in burst mode, and shoots 4K video. It's got a priority lens mount system with a bunch of super compact but super sharp lenses. This one's my favorite, a 22 millimeter F2 lens, which when attached to the body makes it super tiny and compact and a great alternative to the X100 lineup. I actually sold my original X100F because I found myself using this much more. For years now, it's been one of my most used cameras. It used to be my second body that I would take with me all over the world, having it in my pocket to capture behind the scenes content as well as fill in in situations where I couldn't bother to bring my bigger body. But unfortunately Canon made the decision to kill off the EOS M mount. So in this video I'm going to try and understand why they did such a thing. So what does that mean for this camera and what that means for the future of their mirrorless cameras? Let's break it down. This story actually starts way back in 2015 and has nothing to do with Canon at all but everything to do with Samsung. You see, back then I was just a young photographer and I totally bought into the Samsung NX1 with the new proprietary Samsung NX mount. Now, Samsung were a little bit cheeky and they ran a bunch of promotions where if you traded in some of your more established cameras, like a Canon or a Nikon, they would give you a large discount on the Samsung NX system. At the time, I was struggling with my camera. My Canon had lackluster autofocus and didn't have many of the video features that I was looking for from a camera. So when Samsung released the NX1, it was full frame and it blew pretty much everything else out of the water. The original NX line of lenses was really quite compelling. They had a bunch of small compact pancakes as well as some full frame professional standard stuff. I completely bought into it, got a great deal, and I thought that this was gonna be the future. But just four months after I bought my camera, Samsung canceled the NX lineup. And for the next couple of years, I'd be pretty happy with my camera but when I'd be using it, I'd be looking around the other manufacturers and looking at all the gains that they made and wishing that something new would come out which would be available to me and make the investment that I made a little bit more worthwhile. But it never came. Eventually, I had to sell my Samsung NX1 and all of my lenses and I made a considerable loss on it. There was just nothing new, no innovation coming to the lineup and I was fed up of waiting for something that was never gonna come. But why does this matter? for my EOS M6 Mark II. Well, about the time where I was searching for something new, Canon started releasing EOS M mount cameras and the first few were pretty lackluster, but by the time it got around to this one, it seemed like they'd really cracked the code. It had a new lens mount, it was mirrorless and completely redesigned and built from the ground up. Everything was super compact and it had professional features like all the ones I described earlier, 4K video being the main one I was interested in. And I thought this is where I want to end up. I thought this is great. I can sell my Samsung and its cameras and go back to Canon because they finally have some compelling options which I can use for my photography and videography journey. And I wasn't wrong. This is an excellent camera and I still use it all the time. In fact, I'm gonna take it with me to Liz's Run Club. She's collaborating with a salad project and I need to get some professional looking behind the scenes shot of her and her run club having a great time. So let's see how it performs.
you can see, this camera is no slouch. It's a workhorse, it's super reliable. It never misses on the autofocus, it's really snappy, and it allowed me to get some great shots today. I also have an adapter, which means that I can use all of my Canon EF lenses on this body and maximizes the use of my own equipment, which I really enjoy. So if it still performs so well, then what's the problem? Why can't I just continue using this forever? And the answer to this question actually lies in the camera that I'm filming on right now, which is a Sony ZV-E1. And you might think, what the hell does Sony have to do with everything that's going on with the EOS M mount? Well, let me explain. The problem with this entire thing is what could have been. And what could have been is what Sony are producing with this camera right here. It's super compact, just like this, except it has a full frame sensor and shoots 4K 10-bit 422 video, which is great for color grading and exactly what I was looking for from a second body. The problem is, it's not Canon who are producing anything like this. It has a bunch of features that I would really like to see in a Canon body of this size. And what makes it even more interesting is that I picked up a Sigma MC11, which is an adapter, which allows me to use all of my Canon lenses on this body right here. I'm actually filming on a Sigma 24-70 2.8 right now, and it works just as if it was a native lens. So it's allowing me to even get the most out of my Canon equipment that I have lying around, which is exactly what I liked this body for. Meanwhile, compare that to what's happening over here. The EOS M mount is completely dead. I can't expect anything new, no innovations, no new features for the foreseeable future. There'll be no more lenses coming because EF lenses are no longer being released, and Canon have gone a different direction. They have the RF and RFS mounts now, and they're producing many new mirrorless bodies that look completely different from this. They're much bigger, they're slightly bulkier, they're focusing on things like viewfinders and building out a completely separate experience. And that is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the most compact and feature-rich camera that I can buy, which only Sony are providing me with. It's also a real tragedy that I can't use my EFM lenses anymore. This one is my favorite, but I have many different ones. Gone are the days where I can turn up to a running club with an 11 to 22 millimeter, a 22 millimeter prime, a 50 millimeter prime, and a 55 to 200 millimeter lens, all in my running vest, which is just crazy to think about. All of the RF lenses are much bigger. The lens mount is much wider, and they can't produce anything that's this compact size anymore, which I think is a massive missed opportunity. But more importantly, what does this mean more broadly for the future of Canon mirrorless cameras? Well, the good news is I can't see them abandoning the RF or the RFS mount anytime soon. I think they're here to stay, and the EOS M was just an unfortunate casualty of them trying to jump into the mirrorless camera market with not that much experience of making these types of cameras. But as a Canon fanboy and as a consumer, this has left kind of a bad taste in my mouth. I jumped from one lens mount, which died, to another, which I thought would be reliable, and then the rug was pulled underneath my feet. I do think this has encouraged me not to buy so much into a single brand, which is why I shoot Sony as well as Canon now. And I think going forwards, I'm just going to be a little bit more skeptical about the investments that I make in technology to make sure that I don't end up with a bunch of redundant stuff that's slowly going to die. In my eyes, the RFS mount is inferior. It's much bigger than this one is, and it means that they can't provide a compact experience like they did with the EOS M line of cameras. I would love it if they came out with a better successor to this one right here. And even if they do, I'm gonna think twice before jumping to a new ecosystem of lenses and cameras. And I think you probably should too. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. I upload every single week on a Sunday at 5 p.m. I've been really appreciating all the support on these videos. Subscribing makes all the difference to me and motivates me to make more content. If you do have any questions or comments about this camera or the topics of today's video, please leave them in the comments section. And I'll see you next week.